I'm doing this video to kind of return a favor. There's a couple of new YouTubers who've given me some pretty good ideas on how to get a hold of some things that are hard to find. Uh, what I got here is a hydrogen generator that I am using for a torch and uh, run hydrogen experiments. Um, I guess we'll start uh, with this here. Uh, one of our good redneck brothers out there in the hills or wherever gave me the idea to use this angle piece. The guy who's waiting on the bronze wool. Thanks for that, brother. This is far better than the little dart thing I had. This angle is so much easier to use that I definitely advise this is the design you go for because you can use this, manipulate it, it's not in the way, all that stuff. The whole pencil thing doesn't work well. Um, second, another guy on YouTube gave me the idea of where to get bronze wool other than buying it off the internet with a credit card because unless you live somewhere at a boat place that has like $100,000 yachts and stuff like that, you're not going to be able to find the bronze wool very easily. Um, but you can get it out of microwaves. Um, inside the magnetron, right where the rays eject, there's an annular ring of bronze wool that's big enough to fill this top piece, which is basically all you need. Um, bear in mind, bronze wool does have a lifespan. If you got a lot of water and stuff squirting in there on it, it does corrode or something happens to it. Um, makes it all I have a radiator here. You definitely need some way of dumping heat. Bear in mind if your cell's running at about 170 degrees, you're boiling water at the electrodes. Just because the water isn't 212 doesn't mean certain point, points aren't boiling. So what I've done here is I got a pump and on that pump is a cooling fan because the pump itself gets so hot that uh, I'm about to fry it. This thing back here is the cell itself. It is uh, what they call a dry cell setup, I guess. Um, it is made out of stainless steel handicap bars, the kind they use in restrooms. I got them at Menards for about $25 a piece. Um, the inside one's a smaller diameter. It slid right in there, giving me an annular gap of about 2 millimeters. So it worked out awesome. I couldn't believe it. Um, all those pipe dreams of finding 316 stainless steel and all this is just a pain and it's not worth it. If you don't need 316 stainless steel, um, as long as you're using a good electrolyte, which brings me to the next point. So. Lights. Um, don't use baking soda for several reasons. First of all, some people use baking soda thinking that it's a passive electrolyte that's not going to hurt you. Well, there's two things about that you need to understand. First of all, Baking soda is converted into sodium hydroxide in the electrolysis process. Second of all, you're giving off carbon monoxide gas, which is deadly. And third, you're putting off a significant amount of carbon dioxide gas, which pretty much is useless if you're trying to burn flammable gas. So just bear that in mind. It also destroys your electrodes. So don't use baking soda. You can get this at Ace Hardware, 100% lye, pure sodium hydroxide drain cleaner, four dollars for that, and it works awesome. Um, my cell does have some sludge in it because I believe the washers, steel washers at the top, have become exposed, and now they're slowly deteriorating. So I'm in some trouble there. Um, I'm going to show you what 100 amps looks like bubble wise I don't know how many liters per minute this thing puts off because I could basically care less about that at this point um, I do know that if you're going to use this torch for soldering it is excellent for that you don't want to heat the actual area you're soldering just heat an area near it just to get the work hot 50 amps is your golden number on soldering anything else is too much sometimes you get too big of a flame so here we go this is what a hundred amps of gas production looks like. Okay, that's 102 amps. Oh, you can see that. See all that anode sludge in there? Wow. That's about 106 amps of gas. Went up a little bit there. Really kind of a rip off. You'd expect a lot more for those kinds of currents. Okay. Doesn't look like I did. That's a 100 amp flame right there. Squirting water out like crazy. 
If you're going to be cutting metal with this, use some kind of eye protection. I see people on the internet winding themselves by cutting holes. And as you can see, that thing's just blasting right through there pretty good. It's at 100 amps. Okay. Here are the holes. That thing burns in there. Pretty brittle weld. Like I said, on the edge is so brittle that I don't see this as being practical in any way. For what I have here is a small detonation chamber. I'm going to make gas, push this water line down about here. At that point, I'm going to detonate it. It's going to push that water all the way up there into that bottle I got hanging on the wall. And hopefully we'll get to see some good flashes. This is kind of show how powerful or weak the gas actually is. I'm not going to be detonating any gas in open area, by the way. I don't want the cops showing up looking for gunshots. Because it is loud. This stuff is loud. Okay, here we go. It's pumping some water. This is very dangerous. I gotta stop it here. I'm gonna end this here. Thanks for the ideas, fellas. Now what this is here also kind of proves that although hydrogen detonations do implode after explosion, there is in fact an explosion. Some people try telling you it's just an implosion. That's not the case. Here we go. See what happens. Whoa, you hear that? My bubbler just detonated, but it maintained it, so we're good to go. I think that's about all I wanted to tell you here. Another thing, for all you people out there who still think HHO ain't a scam when it comes to running your car, I also found out that uh, hydrogen embrittlement is a property of hydrogen gas that embrittles any metal it comes in contact with, basically. So even if it wasn't a scam, it would still destroy your engine. So please do not hook a hydrogen generator up to your car. They're ripping you off. There it goes. See how it's sucking the water right back in there? There we go. That was a good one. Okay, I got to stop right there. As you can see, if you could see it, the detonation would cause a vacuum inside of there after it exploded. So the whole theory that hydrogen implodes is kind of true, but it also explodes as well. It's about how much water we pumped with those couple of shots. Okay, let me shut this down.